we got the big dog, Travis okay. Kelsey. Uh, uh, Thank you for coming. Doing always this. a pleasure. Legend, legend, always legend, good legend. seeing you, bro. So we had a, when was the run-in we had last? When was that? Sheesh. Probably like, I think after the season had ended. Man, I forget. I had a run-in. I mean, I, I know a lot of athletes, like a lot of, that's probably my one niche like I have from the world I come from. Yeah, for sure. And. There's a little we, bit of respect because you play for college sure, ball, for, for sure. sure. There's that mutual like I think that's what attracts a lot of guys because the music's not mainstream, you yeah, know. So you, you can still appreciate it, really, it though, man, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, but it really like it's it's more of a of a kind of attraction just because there's 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 a like mindedness across it, you know. But this when we when we had our night got that was really the first time we had DM'd a bunch and like talked first time in person. Mm -hmm. We're like, that's a cool motherfucker. When we like, we had a we had ourselves a night. For it was sure. a good time. But Bro, I wanted you, you took me to a spot that I didn't even know existed. Where on the uh, rocks? I don't even know, bro. There was like a band next to us with like a it was a dope vibe and it was dinner. Oh, Delilah. Yeah, Delilah. I had never even seen yeah. I didn't even know they had those kind of Shout out H out Wood. Here. Shout out H Wood okay. properties. Okay, quick shout out. Um, but I mean, first off, as soon as this guy walked in, I feel like I needed to change. You're you're a fashion guy. I you know I just <laughs> talked to your we just I, I just saw you. I was following you along your For Paris sure. Fashion Week. Having some having You're a big fun, fat man. you're in the fashion game though. Like you do this. You know what? I not what I really feel like is I just have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. But for the for the most part, in terms of like wanting to get in that world, I mean, yeah. every off season. You can show the fear of God's off. You feel? Oh, just one time, one time. I don't even know if my knees and my ankles can get up this. there. I just sit like this the whole time. Is it in the shot? I think you just. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Wish um, I had that flexibility. But how was uh, how was Paris? I saw you with so, your lady. Yes, front yes. rowing at the Had, front rowing at all the shows. Just trying the, to hit everyone that I possibly could. I'll tell you, it was it was nuts. Have you been before? No, never, never before. I feel like every off season I try and dabble into like a new field to see what I really want to do once football is all done. Interesting. And um, you know what? That uh, that at least grabbed my attention to the point where I wanted to go to Fashion Week. I wanted to see what it really was overseas. That and I mean going to Paris. I'd never been overseas to really experience Paris or anything over there. So seeing the architecture uh, mixed in with all the shows and and mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, man, it was um it was an experience. That's a, that's the best part I could say. It was a good experience, you know. Right. Just going to shows and mentally taking out like, all right, what is this guy really trying to show? What is he really trying to do with this collab yeah. with this like collection and everything? Like, how is he? How was his mind like? Through through his through his show, how is he really trying to like show these pieces? Like Off White did some like hippie like walk through the grass, like walk through these like the white flower. Like, yeah, yeah, it was nuts, and and I was just like, okay, this is that kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. So like just to see how like everyone tr try to like trigger those emotions and, and see that's and rare. Thoughts. That's like the fact that you're you're a big motherfucker, big NFL guy. It's not necessary. It's it's not the. There's a lot of athletes that get are getting into fashion, especially I feel like more in the NBA. But right, you're a guy like a big motherfucking tight end, and you're going to fashion shows and like actually trying to understand the set, you know what's going on. It's a cool thing. It's a, do you think you're actually? Now I saw I saw the True Colors thing, right? Where that's that's a yeah. clothing line. That's just lifestyle. Lifestyle. Um, yeah. Trying to get everyone that uh that not only follows me but just wants to be a part of a brand that shows like all right. I'm me and I can I can support I me. You feel me? And then yeah. and, and uh be you and stay true, man, always until forever, man. Mm -hmm. Just show your colors throughout your life. Um I feel like we all come from crazy backgrounds. Yeah. And um being a part of that is never is never a bad thing. For sure. You know? So expressing where you're coming from, expressing who you are as a person. Totally. That's uh that's that that's real and who I am for exactly. sure. Exactly. And the TK. It's it's true colors for the people. It's is it out yet or it's yes, coming out? Yes, no, it's out. Okay, it's and it's out, just yeah. what on your on true your colors. Dot com. Yeah, true for colors. Sure. I, I need to hold Shout a bag. Out. Quick plug. Okay. I need to hold a bag. Oh, listen, I oh, got course. you all day. Of course, my guy. All day. Right now, it's weird. We only got winter wear, but listen, we'll get you some nice tees. You, I see you got the jersey. I'll we, utilize we, it all. We got we got some stuff. I wouldn't up. say I'm I'm in your ballpark fashion wise <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> you got I mean, the questions on it all starts from the ground up the little, kicks are on so, yeah kicks kicks, on. kicks yes sure. but i just don't doesn't really get my rocks that's off. where it all started for me i mean growing up in the 90s yeah, yeah all the all the kicks really started to jump off every sport you could think of were you a guy growing up like you go get the jordans on on saturday when they drop or were no. you no 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 family family wasn't had didn't have it together like that we right. were for basketball season I did my first like my first or second year of basketball. I had the uh, 
the Candy Cane 14s mm-hmm. that just re-released not yeah. too long ago. But I got a picture of me, and I put my colors were uh, black and gold. So I I thought I was tight because I threw some black laces in them. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. and I got the tint of tint little red on the kicks, bloody red. Oh, oh we kicking. Now, were you a you were a good basketball player, pretty good. Player. I mean, yeah, if you're gonna say it, yeah, I was great, man. I'll toot the horn. <laughs> I'll toot the horn for you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I could dribble, I might have been able to do some with yeah, it. But now, I was, were you, uh, I mean, you're obviously a fuck, would you be like four or five? Were you a four or I five? I was a three? four trying to play three if the team would let me. Right. Yeah, but it were, was, I was, I was always body and Get somebody. down there, Kelsey. Get yeah. down on the block. Yeah. I was, I was a, I'm going to grab this defensive rebound and act like I'm pushing the break. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. who I was. Well, were you dunking on people and shit? Oh, were for you? sure. I could fly when I was in high school. Sheesh. College, I could still jump, but then once I had the knee surgery, a right. lot of my, a lot of that jumping right. went out the window but we could still make hay yeah you should, i think you're doing all right that body <laughs> that body's doing all right for you I, you give me in the gym i can still throw it down no you're what six what's the six five on a good a chiropractor might be six six mm-hmm. uh shit 265 right now trying to lose five pounds before the season and let's you get were, it going boys and when now when you were in high senior high school were you this sat were you I was my senior year. I was six five two twenty five right. two thirty. I was still a big dude to be in high school, right. playing quarterback. Like I was still the I was the literally the biggest dude on my team. Right. But at that point, in terms of basketball, I had to play the five just because we didn't have anybody that right. was really that much bigger. Ohio, small town. Cleveland. 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 Cleveland Heights, Ohio, just on the east side of Cleveland. We just finished our final Mike Stead tour in Cleveland. There I'm was telling the, you. the House of Blues. I you, was, you told me it went good. I was, was waiting for you to show up. <laughs> we, were ta- we were texting, but you were busy. You were somewhere. No, what it was, is it was during the week. And, you know, I had just had the ankle surgery, so I mm-hmm. couldn't I couldn't jet up there. How'd she but, feel? Uh, fantastic. Ready to rock. Yeah, man. I'm, I've been itching at it, man. They've been holding me on ice all, all off season. Mm-hmm. Haven't been able to get a get any work in, get any competitiveness going. And I feel you. I'm just ready to get out there Pent and cut up it and loose. ready to rock. Yeah. And ready we got a whole new defense, man. And I've seen that. I've seen that. So yeah. you guys are going to have a real fucking real chance. I'll tell you what, man. I mean, obviously was, you did last year as well, but. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you can't put it all on the defense. We played like crap in the first half of that, that right. NFC championship or the AFC championship game. But um, going into that, like. The defense saved our tail that first half. Mm-hmm. So we just had to match their intensity to the second half. But history writes itself. Right. So We talked about this in person a little bit, but Mahomes is a fucking dog. I, I was like one of the first things I asked you. was like, is this, this dude the real, it's the real deal. Like, that's the guy. That's he's, the guy. He's about as real deal as it comes. Yeah, like, like just both. Reinventing the position almost, like the way he plays it in a way. It's crazy. It's crazy. No look passes playing like, with him. Playing with him is off, is off the charge because it's literally never over. Yeah, plays never dead. Never. Like when I tell you never, like you you could be opposite side of the where he's rolling out. Right. Forty yards downfield, and he, if he peeks at you out of like the peripheral, and his peripheral is unbelievable. He'll huck the it. Fuck it. He'll huck it, and it's not even just, just a heater. Huck right, it right in the, right on the right in the bread money. basket. It's nuts. It's wild. And we're trying to get a couple of young guys uh, to understand that quick. Like, hey, yo, like this yeah. thing's never dead. Yeah, keep fucking ever. So are you like re- like so in the play, you obviously have your route, right? Yeah. With a guy like him, like you're saying, are you just fucking? What's your what's your mindset I'm not lie. when the so, when the play breaks down? Are you just like, bro, it's it's unbelievable. So I'll I'm at the point where I am in the career in my career, mm-hmm. like I can kind of do some shit that usually <laughs> isn't like within the route yeah you know what i mean like i've un- i understand routes and what i see in front of me right and because i play qb at least is what i think uh, everybody's got their own yeah. opinion and everything but because i play qb i understand what the qbs are really taught and what they're they're going through in terms of drops timing it's definitely, it's definitely reads. An and so if i know if it's a certain coverage not only do i know where the windows are or where he's trying to find windows or where he's trying to throw the ball but i know reads so i know all right he's going to look this way to throw back here mm-hmm. so i know exactly where to be when to be and i mean that just it just turns into kind of its own art piece running a running a route uh, because what we're doing as route runners, we're painting a picture for the QB. Mm. So the QB sees what coverage it is, and he's like, okay, this is where I'm going. Let me look over here. Like, if it's Picasso, all right, the nose is over by the ear. All right, here we go. <laughs> right on the Crazy. money. You know what I mean? So Crazy. it's like. It seems like you guys created like a little bit of like like a telepathy where like you kind of, 
That, yeah, I mean, especially for sure. last year, for you, sure. you fucking set the record, and then some other motherfucker beat it like seven minutes later. Kittle, with, Kittle was rolling. They were just yeah, feeding him that last yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. He was rolling. But uh, like, we, he's we a had dog talked too, about though, that. Right? Like you guys were celebrating in a box, and then the same game, right? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Before guy. my game was even over. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. But an incredible fucking year. I it feels like that. you guys had. That's kind of what you guys have already, which is kind of rare. It's not like you guys been playing for fucking ten seasons. Yeah. But it Without feels doubt, like you have that, right? I mean, the chemistry amongst just the offensive guys right. is through the freaking roof, man. And it's all because of what 1-5 is doing back there. He just makes it so easy to play with him. Yeah. And uh, he sees everything on the on the freaking field. What's his vibe as a, as a guy? He seems like the fu- like a fucking Just dog. Coors, man. Like, Get him, give him a Coors and he's a bro. Cold American, bu- you know, just a Texas cold American boy. brewski. Just Love that. Texas bread. And- yeah. Speaking of brews, you've been fucking crushing the off season when you get your opportunity to chug a brewski you think i mean sending it it makes me proud made my like it comes across my timeline and it just warms my heart i love like that's my guy right there just fucking dogging him where were you the final four everywhere man everywhere just for whatever for whatever reason i I decided to go everywhere with my homes and sure enough yeah final four texas tech they had to show my homes of course so i made a little a little play made a little like you know what i'll just go ahead and double fist and like whenever they have a big bucket yeah i'll just go ahead and chug a few and eventually i'll get on there see what happened was the nfl switched it up so that we're allowed to get sponsored by uh alcoholic beverages now really yeah I think it's just I think it's beer. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but yeah, chuck away, exciting. chuck away, boys. Exciting, <laughs> it's the exciting news. It's always a time. money move. It's always a money move behind it all. For you know, sure. You know. No, I wanted to bring that up too. I see you got you. So you're getting into this space now. Where what, what do you have? Another year before you have a contract year? I think I got three. So including this year, I got three. Okay. So so you have a. I see the the alignments with brands happening though. That, that that's a, obviously. I mean, when I talk to athletes, we this, they talk about this a bunch. Pr- trying to get to a point where you're just stashing your football money, you know, what I mean, yeah, making that's all the, the bread off. Thing. That's yeah. what you, that's what I, I mean. That's the main focus, at least with me, is that don't ever touch any of the football money. Right. You know what I mean? And and fortunately, I've been in a situation to where I've been able to do that. Um, and it's not just building. It's not just making money constantly. I mean, I'm not just crazy right. saying yes to everything right. left and right. You know what I mean? It's brands I genuinely want to work with, genuinely right. like care about that I think, all right, that makes sense. Let's go work with that. Totally. Picking your spots. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys that just are like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'll take the bag, sir. Yeah, I've been in a fortunate uh, spot to be able to, you know, say yes to yeah. a few and say, yeah, you know what? That's not for me. Mm-hmm. And but, I want to I wanna say when we started DMing or talking a bit, it was around the time you had the TV show, and we we had a TV show at that time too. Right um, on a small network. What mm-hmm. network was yours on? Mine was on E. On E. Yes. So the bigger version of ours was Esquire, which is right. a sister network to E. So I didn't. I want. I you know, I didn't really see. I didn't see. I don't watch a, a lot of fucking TV, so I didn't see it. I'm glad you. I didn't need see to know it. what the fuck your experience was with that and how. Man, sheesh. So that was. That was. Do you quite hate the it looking back on it? I, I fucking hate it. Yeah. Um, not the greatest move, um, hey, but you, but has its perks. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, don't you, boys? <laughs> so the uh, the the perks were that you know what they what was seen on television was that I could I could host my own show. Right. Shows like The Bachelor, they have hosts, so I could host my own show. I could be a personality. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and that, I can run was, with it. I can run with it. Was and, that more the not to cut you off? Yes. Was that more that was more like the undertone undertone of like the decision making was like, look, I could this is a good opportunity to showcase like my personality and th- those For capabilities. Sure. Definitely, yeah. without a doubt, was to be able to get out there and just to show my face outside or mm-hmm. with without the face mask on, without the helmet. Because right. that was really the first time that I had got out there right. nationally and done anything. And, um, I mean, there have been opportunities after that for reality stuff. And yeah. it's just reality is a different world, man. You got to... Oh, yeah. And I, I I hate to trash it. I mean, I, I respect people that do it. Right. But if it, if that's not your vibe, then that's the, you're just going to... You're going to end up fucking hating it. Yeah. <laughs> Which it wasn't my vibe. Yeah. And my brother kind of told me, he was like, E Network, reality TV, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, I looked at him, I was like, so you trying to be in it? <laughs> so is he your older brother? Two years older, yeah. Is he just like, is he more of a straight shooter than you? Like, Oh, in- man. Like, he'll he'll tell you fuck off. Like, I love he'll, it. he'll look at you straight in your face and be like, get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. 
he's in a, like, in a kind, nice way. Yeah, he won't yeah. just be like, get the fuck out of here or anything. Like he's a douchebag. Yeah. But he's just like he'll let you know, like, oh, all right, yeah, all right. Well, here I'm gonna go grab a beer or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like he'll smoothly slide out of there. So, what are your parents like? Are they just fucking behemoth mother like huge you would motherfuckers? Think, you would think, man. My dad's six foot. Mom is five nine. Like I don't know where I mean, the hell five I came tall from. For, for, but not it is. like it's not fucking two huge dudes in the NFL. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't think it. I mean, my mom could run like a gazelle when okay. she, when she was younger. So we get all our athleticism from her. But in terms of the mind, my dad could just sit there and ramble off Jeopardy all day. Like his like his intellect and his ability to absorb information and be able to like artistically be able to to, to kind of deliver it i mean it's um it's impressive but i definitely we definitely got the best of both worlds in that aspect yeah, obviously yeah. there's there's plus and minuses what you get from your parents <laughs> right and you get to you get you as you grow you get to figure out what yeah, those yeah. are and everything so for sure but that's, it's fun that's kind of what i want to get into this we were talking before we got on the idea of this really is just like i try to have people with stories come on here and just share it you know and and uh you know i kind of with a focus on psyche um and just i know you've been through certain hardships just your story you're from a small town you yeah. know and it's kind of been the hometown team where we went to play it with cincinnati cincinnati yep. and you're a quarterback yeah qb yeah QB so let's Swiss let's slow down time. growing up just walk give us a nutshell what, what the vibe was you obviously had a bigger brother yeah um a small town family right like yeah. blue collar i'm kind of the same in blue that collar, regard Midwest for sure yeah yeah and uh just give us like a nutshell kind of a little nutshell of your story and i'll just we'll chop it up yeah for sure so i um i originally was born in on the west side of cleveland west south side uh north ridgeville and uh my first five years of life i was out there it's kind of like the country the boonies it wasn't the uh i want to say trailer trailer park but there right. was a trailer there was a trailer park right down the street mm -hmm. um it was a, it was a, it was a interesting vibe. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I was very fortunate in my entire life. My parents put me and my brother first right. towards everything. Like, mm -hmm. my dad got put in a whole lot of debt because he always chose us and gave us as much as he could through it all, which I am so thankful for. And mm -hmm. um, moving forward, once I once I moved to Cleveland, it was, that North Ridgeville is predominantly white mm -hmm. country, white kids. Mm -hmm. Moved to. Cleveland Heights, which is the east side of Cleveland, you're right up the hill. It's uh, the the high school is five thousand, four thousand kids, like graduating class of around a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand kids. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a huge school. Mm -hmm. The melting pot that I grew up in, I wasn't necessarily used to when I was five. Right. So I went there, and all of a sudden, there's half of the school districts, I'm not gonna say half the school district, but a part of the school district is technically the hood. Mm -hmm. Like, there's kids that are out here doing stuff that, you know, you might, whatever it may be, it's the hood, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm growing up in the mix of trying to, not only going to school for the first time, but being around a community, a bunch of kids that I had never really been right. around, right? So. For from probably five to from the minute I started school till about six eight to eighth grade mm -hmm. all the way through middle school I was I was getting in fights left and right just because I was bumping heads. Sounds familiar, right? So that was the same way. I remember I remember a I remember a fight I had and and it's funny how like as your kids you just fight just because yeah. your mama. I miss you know those what I mean? days. Yeah. Your mama, yeah. You all right, scrap, well, fight me you then. Go home, you got your ass kicked. Your yeah. parents aren't gonna call the cops. They're so like, all right, deal with it. You yeah, know what I mean, exactly. Put a little, rub a little dirt on it, you'll be fine. <laughs> so. um I remember it was uh, it was an older kid in my brother's grade and a younger kid in my grade in the Delks. They were the Delk brothers, Brandon and and uh, Bernard. Fuck Delk. you guys if you're listening. <laughs> but that's the thing though, we became friends. So shout out to the Delks. No, but we became cool Kidding. over over the <laughs> over the course of life. And as we got to high school, we ended up playing sports together and whatnot. But at the time, it was like, yo, like he's having beef with his brother. Everyone knows I ha I got beef with Brandon. And sure enough, all right, after school, meet on the hill. Two on two on the hill. Let's you know what I mean? And it was two on two. Love that. It was two on two. And I don't remember the outcome. I just remember I didn't go home without a scratch. But I, but it was it was one of those moments in in like your childhood that you're like, oh man, my brother's got my back. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, it was kind of like, all right, what's he doing? 
what's he doing? So I started playing hockey because of him. I started playing lacrosse because of him. I started playing baseball, basketball. Wow. Like basketball was the only choice that I like made on my own. And it was because of all the friends that I had. I got hooked on sneakers. I got hooked on Michael yeah. Jordan. Mm -hmm. I got hooked on the, the entire world of, you know what I mean, the 90s basketball, like, scene so i i got i got into that my brother was doing his thing um in hockey and lacrosse and he ended up doing i think like winter soccer like indoor soccer and stuff up there in cleveland and um a big boy for soccer he's a big dude man he was aggressive too i'm talking about like, you're getting clotheslined <laughs> you're getting clotheslined. soccer would be like soccer i i mean i'm not a guy who like really has invested a lot of time in it but as i've gotten older like i'm open-minded to a bunch mm -hmm. more shit you can get fucked up playing soccer. You can, listen. Like, I, those motherfuckers are going, I mean, it's obviously not even in the same ballpark as the NFL. Like, and so. you know what? Somebody, there was a there was an old old school guy, I'm not going to name any names, there was an old school cat that said that there are more concussions in soccer than there are in football. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uppercut him right there. Just like, <laughs> just give him one. Just to be like, all right, there it goes. There's your, one. There's, there's another, another concussion. <laughs> added to it. I'm like, yeah. no, there's fucking not. It's probably just like, because like. Yeah, all right. There's a few head-to-head -head, like collisions. Yeah, like, oh, no. don't Everyone's heading at the same time. I'm like, ah, nah. Yeah. Listen, there's no. Chance. There's at least one or two concussions every game in the NFL. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to hear that. There's shit. no chance. And if there's not concussions happening, there's there's you're you're chipping away at a concussion. Yeah, that's with all these yeah. fucking hit, and, you know. And and like the ones that aren't even like in the data. Like, there's been a time where I've gotten a concussion. I don't say shit to anybody. Exactly. I'm trying to fucking play. I'm not exactly. trying to leave this game. Exactly. I get up like, oh shit, what the fuck just happened? Now is that is that something that. Is that how how serious is that amongst amongst like locker room banter and the guys and the are there guys like pudding brain? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, dude, my brain is slowly like becoming mush. Pudding brain. Yeah. It's funny to talk about like when like after the after like in the locker room. It's funny to talk about when you leave the locker room. It's like, all right, I got to seriously like think about what the fuck, right. <laughs> what am I doing? No, seriously, because you know, there's different. I mean, because you can joke about just about anything in the locker room, right? But as soon as you leave the locker room, it's like, all right, what's real and what's not real, right? You know, so right. And you got motherfuckers, you know, like um, the guy Aaron Hernandez is a perfect example of a guy who. I mean, obviously at the most fucking extreme level, yeah. some crazy wild shit. But just like, <laughs> for real. And that motherfucker, I used to That's see that, that, that dude around hey, Boston. Shout out to A, man. I used to see that dude around Boston. He was a boss. He was he was a dog at football, man. Oh, yeah. And I loved watching him play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously. I actually played, played against him once. What was, uh, what was your the experience? 2009 was he balling? Sugar Bowl. Yeah, he, he, him, Team Tebow had his like legendary day. They smoked us. We went, we went undefeated and got a bid to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, and we got rolled. Yeah, Sheesh. I had I had one carry for twenty five yards. I was balling. I was I was Wildcat QB. I was back there just I, just looking, just That's reading so reading wild. Carlos Dunlop. Like, yeah, where are you going? Not this one. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Carlos. But like seriously, the this this the um just the fucking constant constant damage that could be that. Obviously, isn't technically happening all on every play, but like, it's one of those things where, bro, like, are you just eliminating? You don't, you don't even have those thoughts as you're playing the game, but like, it's one of those things where it's it's really the only one of the only games, if not the only game that I feel like every play, every play, there's just a chance where you're it's like rocked. you can get your fuck, you can just get demolished, yeah. like yeah. get For absolutely sure. demolished. There's only there's only one time where I'm just like, all right, fuck it, and that's if the ball's. Sky high in the air going over the middle. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, all right, my team. I'm going. Excuse me, my team needs this. Mm -hmm. You know, the QB's putting it up there for me to make a play. And that's the only time I just go up and just say, fuck it. And that's what it takes. Out of, out of, every, out of all the other situations, like if I'm just going to put my head down and try and run through a guy, like all the other like small, tiny decisions, I might go ahead and just right. try and make a move to get right. around him instead of trying to go through him anymore. Because once you have one, you realize, all right, I can't, yeah. if I get a concussion, I'm not in, I'm not I mean, back you're hurting your team more, that two yards that you might get or whatever, yeah. versus the longevity that you can offer if you're making the right decisions. Exactly, play. exactly. Yeah. Willie Lanier, Hall of Famer, uh, Kansas City guy taught me that. He told, he was like, listen, I just realized I got to put myself in a smarter position. I can't just keep just throwing myself in the opportunity right. of getting concussed. Right. I was just like, damn. You what know? do you have, one? I had two in one season, and then I switched helmets, and I haven't had one. Really? Yeah. So we're rolling. Just more pads, more more internal just padding? Just a different technology. Mm -hmm. Different technology. It's like the ones I was wearing were like made in like the 90s. Okay. And then... 
it's just the time helmet I had. Yeah, it's just the helmet that I had used all the way through my life. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, ah, no, I'm good. Yeah, time, then, time to put that baby to rest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your 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 brother, you're following his footsteps yeah. in a lot of ways, and and that's just he, stayed year, true. Two years older than you. Two, stay, yeah, two years older than me. Um, and that was a lot of my success growing up. Was that I was I had the like my dad was one of those guys who were like, hey, what are you doing? I'm I'm like I ain't doing nothing. He's like, all right, come with us. We're going to the Jason's game. If they need an extra guy, you're playing. You know what I mean? And it, that was every single sport, lacrosse, hockey, Love baseball, it. you name it. And and sure enough, I'm playing up against guys that are, that I think are like, at that age, I'm like, I'm, these guys are grown men. Like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a little dude compared to these dudes. But height-wise and weight-wise, I was the same size. Mm -hmm. You know, so just being able to gain confidence in that aspect um, – throughout my life like that that set me up to where when i was playing in in my my age group the confidence is through the roof right like i had success against these jamokes like i'm about to go off on you guys mm -hmm. so that built a lot of confidence and then i saw how my brother used to kind of <laughs> react to a lot of stuff where this is this is like the roller coaster of trying to find out what's right what's right what's wrong what you should do in situations what you shouldn't and he he had mental like issues like he had anger management to the fucking max <laughs> like i'm talking about ripping doors off the the he's hinges where he's ass. mad at the house like yeah he's just at this he was just like all right i'm out of control he can't control it once he gets mad he's got to show everyone that he's fucking pissed Mm. And um, and there's countless stories about shit like that. But I I took what he was doing, and I was like, oh, all right, that's how you that's how you get. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> let people know. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. And um, so I in like a sport like basketball, I'm fucking getting teed up. I'm fouling out and shit. <laughs> and it's going through the roof. Like if I'm not getting any fouls, I'm motherfucking the ref. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So that and that kind of translated into really throughout my entire career even into the nfl where i was getting flagged i was getting yeah. kicked out of games i mean that's part of your I was doing silly there's shit. A stigma about you know you're a guy that's flat like i read some shit where you know we knew we we're gonna have the conversation i wanted to read some shit i was saying oh, nice. did some nice. research on you be proud deserve it Thanks, man. um and uh there was one guy like the combine. I don't think you even went to the combine because you were hurt, right? Right. I didn't do any of the numbers. But I people went, were but... saying you like one quote was like, "He has train wreck character." Wise. Like, <laughs> yeah, it fucking sucks. That guy really nailed that. That guy fucking sucks. Loser. Fuck yeah. that guy too. Yeah. We're motherfucking everyone today. Fuck him. Um, but like seriously, the 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 stigma that followed you, you know, just all the things are those things that. For you, like as you as you encounter those, are those bulletin board things? Are you one of those guys? Or are you just like fuck it? Yeah, fuck that guy. Mm. That's all. That's right. That's all I do right there. So yeah. fuck that guy. I Next. could honestly care less what he just wrote it's about. Way to be. And uh, I've always been. Let me prove my family right. Because my my father, my mother, the people that matter. My mother's a freaking saint. She's a sweetheart. My dad, my dad's as true as it comes. Like he's he. He doesn't ride the wave of politics. He's just like, I'm sitting right in between. I'm going to tell you what's right, what's wrong, and uh, I, I'm not going to pick a side. I'm going to have my own side. I'm going to be me. It's crazy you as know? you get older. Like You look back at your parents. You're like, you guys are fucking saints. Yeah, you guys are How'd awesome. How would you guys do this? Right? How the fuck did you do this? <laughs> and, uh, and my dad, my entire career, I, I remember there were, I mean, there's highs and lows in every kid's life, but I remember there was a there was a point in time, and uh, I was playing baseball, and I had... I had screwed up like a championship. We were in like Cooperstown or something like that. And I had screwed up like I was playing first base. Everyone's didn't scoop, been there and played baseball. Didn't scoop the ball the right way or just completely missed the ball in, at first base like mm -hmm. in like the late innings. And I got benched because of it. And I was just crying the entire time like I lost it lost the game for the team and he's like mm -hmm. listen every kid over there is going to be jealous because you're going to be playing professional sports and i was just like man what yeah it's like that doesn't mean anything right now yeah yeah, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but at the end of the day it's like the guy the guy still the guy motivated me, me yeah. Yeah, and, and put it in here so i just wanted to prove him right my entire life that's really that's actually you know I mean? a fucking really i've never heard it put that way like proving your family right yeah because i feel the same fucking way right you know like especially in the day and age where everyone has a platform and a voice and everyone's got something to say and Sheesh. everyone's i feel like people are mainly just saying shit for the potential that their shit can go viral or the potential Guaranteed. of attention just the potential of attention maybe even your attention potential you hit them back I you're fucking, like you know what i hate like about oh potential? man i'm just kidding I just I, I love you you know like you chirp people back on Twitter like that happened to me at the point where I was like why am I even engaging it was Fuck. so revealing when they would when they would flip sides as soon as you you yeah. know return oh it. dude I'm a fan dude yeah. I was just trying to you know like no. it's really a bigger that's a bigger nutshell of like what you just said and 
the people you don't know what to do it until you go through that mm -hmm. you don't you don't you don't see that that mm -hmm. lane until you go through it that's mm -hmm. why it's hard to kind of teach the 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 guys coming into the game the guys coming into that life like hey like you see some shit on twitter of people just yapping away mm -hmm. um Bro, just let that shit ride. What does it matter? That doesn't mean dog shit. Mm -hmm. Half the people that have like maybe 90 followers, maybe that. And at that point, like, all right, they're going to get 90 impressions. And everyone, 90, like 90% 90 of those 90 impressions are just going to be like, what? All right, swipe. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just going to keep going like mm -hmm. it didn't even fucking matter. Mm -hmm. And that, that, whole th that whole aspect of, you know, like we said, just fuck it. Whatever that dude's talking about, mm -hmm. that is something that's turned me into a more calm player. So mm -hmm. I, like you were saying, the rage of like, oh man, I'm not getting any fucking, all right, I'm mm -hmm. not getting any fucking calls, fuck you, mm -hmm. has turned into, all right, I'm not getting any calls, all right. You know what? I'm going to make them call one on me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be so physical that I'm literally going to throw this dude on the ground and they're going to have to throw one on me and I'm going to go up to him and be like, hey man, he's all over me. I'm just trying to get him off me. So you know you've what I mean? You've, uh, so yeah. I've had that roller coaster trying to find Mm -hmm. the the madness within the madness right. you know what i mean the 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 craziness inside of what's really going on and how i usually react to shit yeah so i mean that's fucking maturity you know i feel like i'm a mastermind when i'm out there now. <laughs> I'm just like all right how, how can i manipulate this shit yeah so <laughs> you're playing on the on the field you're playing little internal mind games with who you're playing against. everyone 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 in front of me um Maybe not the refs so much. The refs are going to be the are you, refs. Are you shitting that, on them? Are you are you talking shit the entire time? Are you? I was a, I was a big shit talker when I was in college, my first couple of years. But what that does for me is it it it's like it like rage the game rage or uh -huh. like the yeah. movie rage. Like dude, it just freaking just do 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 do. Like it gets to the point where it's like I'm ready to just explode in a good way or a bad way. In a bad way. So that's when I start to motherfuck the refs. That's when I'm like I start to like go crazy on or start taking extra shots on guys after plays like just stuff that's like silly shit that's going to hurt the team right that's what i had to like get out of my game so i had to become more calm in the atmosphere so i hear a guy talking shit i might hit him with some player shit like <laughs> yeah get your money up dog or like yeah, something yeah. like that like oh right. nice kicks these are these are custom and just keep it moving right. or something like that right you know what i mean just to be silly but less of like but you're, you're less of like fuck you i'm compartmentalizing the rage you're not fucking up your vibe exactly mm -hmm. exactly now are you are you off the field are you a guy that's like working on your mind frame and working on your uh, you know because I've talked Man. about this with almost every guest, it's really been big for me. Yeah. I, I used we have so many similarities. I've been saying this with a lot of guys we've had here because that's probably why we get connected with people. Yeah, you for know? sure, man. But it's it's uh I've had a I've had a huge kind of um, step towards like mindfulness and and consciously working on like gratitude and being p more on the peaceful side. And enjoy obviously, you're playing a fucking barbaric sport, so there's like. You gotta have but what you're talking eventually. about really is like you know you're you're con you're taking control Bro. of your thoughts and figuring out how to utilize them properly. Now off the field, in season, off season, are you a guy that has any type of routine mentally, or yeah. what's your vibe? What for sure? Any things that I help for you? I feel like there's always a psychological aspect to whatever you're doing, sports, life, facts. You know what I mean? Whatever, whatever. Um, was a field that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can attack it psychologically and not only help yourself handle certain situations, but help yourself get better at certain situations. And um, with football, a lot of it has to do with with knowing not only what you're doing, but what the people around you are doing, but um, how to handle adversity, mm -hmm. um, how to handle things that are out of your control. I mean, that's the biggest thing in life. I mean, there's so also many. Also, just like, also just like, it's such, there's such a, ego like these big strong guys these athletes you're you're with a bunch of big motherfuckers all very you know the ego that comes with being oh, a big the, strong the bravado motherfucker of, yeah, the bravado football. and football fucking locker rooms i run through probably, you i run through you so, yeah, yeah nah. so like to be able to manage that be likable build chemistry with these guys you know it takes a certain level of maturity or even mental maturity to be able to tone down to have this chemistry with these guys and be able to, For sure. you know, like Hell yeah. that takes a lot of, I, I can't even, I mean, I was on a baseball team at a high level and that's a lot less bravado than a football still, team. You still got, you still, still got there. different characters. Yeah. Still there. Guys. But you know, like, you know, 
triple the size team, bunch of big ass motherfuckers yeah. who are always the strongest, biggest, fastest guys wherever they're from. Right. You know, <laughs> so there's really a manage a management, personal management in order cuz if you if you're not jiving with people, obviously if you're just balling, you're balling, but if you're not jiving with the team or the guys that fucking block for you, the guys that, Listen, you know what I mean, it's it's really an important facet of it. Without a doubt, man. Yeah. I think um there's certain like I, I I've always been somebody to, like live for live for certain reasons and like have a motto, have an understanding of who you are, so you can like trigger that in mm -hmm. the right direction. Mm -hmm. And one of mine is is always remember who you are and whose you are, relating it to family, relating it to where you come from. I've been somebody that's like I said, the melting pot, the the different social classes, the different ethnicities, mm -hmm. the the diversity where I came from mm -hmm. was so crazy and so like intertwined that it was. It was something that's dear to me. Has made me able to literally go into the locker room and talk to everybody, be able to be relatable. Too. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying it was. A, Seriously, it was though. a fashion statement that I wasn't a part of in high school, but it was. It was a part oh, of just the, the, the wow. like I, I, people talk to me about this all the time because I don't look like a rapper at all. <laughs> so people are like you know, and I grew up with all black kids. Like I, mm -hmm. I was, I went to, I got was it's similar, man. I got so many fights. I got kicked out of middle school, kicked out of my my high school, mm -hmm. went to another one was mainly all inner city kids. I got along with those kids way more. Mm -hmm. Cuz I wasn't, you know, I was very very middle class, but not to a point where I was living with all inner city kids. We were in a small suburb, small, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Um, exactly and we'd we'll go to this inner city school and that that was the only place I didn't get in fights, but played basketball very serious basketball for a while before I started throwing way harder. It became clear that I needed to be, a, if I was going to go to the next level and like have a career in sports, it was mm. going to be a pitcher, you know? So that happened probably like 10th, 11th grade. But up till then I was so serious and loved, I actually liked playing basketball more. So I had mainly all, all, man. mainly all yeah, black yeah. friends or, you know, of a minority or, you know, at least from the inner city, sure. that vibe, but it gives you, it really does, bro. Like it gives you a certain thought where you're, you know, it's just like anything else. You're programmed by your surroundings. Exactly. You're programmed by your mom and dad. We're blessed to have amazing mom. They programmed us properly in ways to help us. A lot of people have the adverse effect. Yeah. So like it, it became very, man. yeah, because really like you have no control over that. You grow up in some shithole in fucking bumfuck Alabama and your dad's a racist and you're, they, they don't. How do you know any better? You're yeah. you're you're with a bunch of similar minded people. You don't have shit, you know? Like that that's really a huge factor. Huge. But when you get on a team, you're around all these motherfuckers. All these guys have been programmed differently and ain't no yeah. one telling them shit. They're bigger <laughs> and stronger than everybody, you know? So it's it's really interesting to oh, it's just being culturally diverse, man. Being able to dabble exactly. in and and not only that, but appreciate the the guy next to you. I mean, that's the funnest part that I saw over in Paris is I was in a different culture and I was in love with all of it out there. Mm. You know what I mean? So I think, I think like right on what you were saying, man, the sauce, mm -hmm. if you got the sauce, that just means you appreciate other yeah. cultures and you can vibe with all of them. A man. chameleon, you know, like somebody oh, yeah. that just, and it's really, you know, it's, it's really a fucking benefit of your surrounding, your, your circumstance. Yeah, yeah. Man, shout out to the Heights, man. Shout out to the for Heights. For real, for real. So you were there up to what, Cincinnati? Up yeah, to up to Cincinnati. To Cincinnati. So I went to Cincinnati on a on at what was the time a football basketball scholarship. Really, I thought I was about to play Big East basketball, be in Madison Square Garden yeah. playing for that's, that's, you know, the Big East especially championship. Then. Oh, it especially was real. Then it was, it was real. real. Wait, Cincinnati, Bob Huggins? But, no, Bob was. He actually recruited me at West V, which is cool because when he comes to the the Big Twelve tournament now, I always say what's up to him. Yeah. Um, but he uh he was at West Virginia. He had just got to West Virginia and offered me late. And I almost, I went to my dad. I was like, Dad, man, Bob Huggins, West Virginia. Like, I got to go. You seem like a big Bob Huggins I got to go. You yeah, I would have, really me, me and Bob hit it off. I'm yeah. talking about, I went down and visited West V with my coach, and we hit it off. And Fucking shithole, though. My dad. <laughs> 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 I can say it now, man. Fuck Morgan. My dog, time, man. my dog, uh, one uh, of my dogs, Huey, like was a was an artist. And when we were coming that's up, that's too funny, man. We would we would go party at West Virginia, and I'm like, I mean, dude, oh, you can I had, party there I had all some day. Of my best fucking nights that's at what the I'm time. Yeah. Amazing, but what a fucking shit. <laughs> God damn, there ain't shit there. But like, it's just oh, a big man. ass fucking area of parties. You ever like, heard you of runaway down, runaway uh, beer truck? No. Oh man. What so, is it? So there's a there's a there's a guy that used to play fullback at the University of West Virginia or West Virginia University, whatever the fuck it is. And 
he ended up playing on my brother's uh, team in Philly. Mm. And if you, if you if you remember, yeah, if you remember back then, there was a dude that played fullback that uh, that would throw his helmet into his face if he like screwed up. He definitely went to West and Virginia. just yeah, definitely went to West Virginia <laughs> and would just like blood would just start rolling down his face. And he got the name because there was a crazy party in West Virginia, and, what was his and name he again? went uh, Owen Schmidt. And what was the what was the name though? Like the Runaway what? Beer Truck. Runaway Beer Truck. There was a party. There was a huge house party, or whatever. And he goes to go grab liquor, and the beer trucks like unloading, going in, going out, going in, going out. Well, when he when oh, the guy man. went in, of course he stole the beer truck, pulled it up to the party. Everyone unloaded, and he just rolled. He just everyone just took the felony in stride. And I don't even think up. he got. I don't even think he got hit. <laughs> I don't wow. even think he got hit. That's that, how crazy. Now he's that's going how down. crazy Morgantown is, is. That they were so in love with West Virginia oh, yeah, football yeah. that that's, somebody that's took a happened. hit for him. Somebody you know repaid him or that's something. Probably what like, happened. Crazy. Runaway beer truck man. That's and my was, favorite story. And he story made it to the league. That. He made it to the league. Yeah. Are there guys in the league? Are there a bunch of like psycho motherfuckers like that in the league? Just like smack like. Is that type of shit going on? Like the intimidation of. Just, I feel like more so back in the early two yeah. thousands, nineties. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone that's psycho gets help in college, and yeah. it's like it's all good by the time they get to. It's the just league. not healthy. Like that back in the day, it was like this guy's a fucking killer, man. Oh, you'll run through a wall, and then yeah. you literally see the dude with a helmet on running through a wall, and it's just like, oh yeah, that was sweet. Like yeah, yeah he's damaged for life. <laughs> he's, he's retired at twenty eight and has no money and no family or friends. But college was awesome. Guy killed it. His eighteen to twenty two year old age group. Yeah. We had we had more nutsos and psychos on the. Uh, on, on my college team for mm. sure mm. so cincinnati was so i've been i've we've spent some good time in cincinnati but it's mm-hmm. uh it's yeah it was around the campus right where we go like fountain square was that around when you were there i don't even know where fountain that's how in got, depth i was in no cincinnati yeah out. we were surrounded by the hood i just yeah no i was campus. just gonna say what's the name of the projects out there really dangerous area do you know uh the, do you remember? I know Hughes High School was right there. It's been a little while, but there was an area. Oh, yeah. There was an area name for it, and they're like, "Avoid this fucking place." I'm drawing a blank. I've and we rode over the Rhine. Is that it? Yeah, it's it's nicer now, so it might not be what you're talking about now. But over the Rhine was great. literally <laughs> over the line. Over the Rhine was like, "Hey, yo, don't go over the Rhine." Yeah, yeah. And I, I was I was stealing in college. Mm. My first couple years, my first couple years, so, my, so, so I'll finish the story. So I follow my brother there. Mm-hmm. and um, Oh, wait. So your brother went to Cincinnati. Yeah. So that's that's when I tell so you, you, I literally followed his footsteps through it all. Like, I, like, got guidance That's through it crazy. All. But I still fucked it up in, the in, in mm-hmm. like, the grand scheme of things and had my own little roller coaster in the, Worked in out the midst right. of it. We'll, 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 we'll get, we'll get to figure it. some things out. Yeah. So so I get to, I get to Cincinnati. My first year, I'm not doing dog shit. I'm just partying, having fun. I got red shirted. Um, Why the red shirt? Uh, I was just I was trying to be a QB, and they had like two or three that were that they knew were the the ones. Um, my second year came around. My red shirt freshman year came around, and he the the coach at the time was like, "Hey, we're about to do we're about to do a wildcat position. I got you two quarterbacks that that are runners. Mm-hmm. Like you guys are going to kind of duel it out and see who gets it." And I ended up getting it. The first game, two touchdowns over like fifty yards. Labor Day, like special, like it was like everyone at home was like, okay, I see you try. Mm-hmm. And I, like that was like my first time of like being on ESPN playing. How far, scoring. How far was hometown from this? It's like four hours okay. from top of the because kind Cleveland's, of a hometown vibe though. Cleveland's but. top, yeah. No, it's still Midwest. I mean, yeah. you're still getting the same vibes. Yeah. Cincinnati's a little like they 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 kind of think they're country ish, like you know what mm-hmm. I mean. But mm-hmm. they still got that Midwest vibe to them because right. they're right there next to Kentucky yeah. and Tennessee Very and Indiana. Kentucky, so yeah. it's like. It's right there, but either way, though, it's it's still a big city in its own its own mind. So they have their own vibe, but mm-hmm. and I loved it there. But we uh, so freshman year goes by. So you balled on Labor Day. Balled on Labor Day. The second game ended up getting a touchdown call back. Um, or the second game ended up getting a touchdown call back, and then sure enough, the third game our QB went down, and we put in a dual threat guy. Where you don't need a wildcat if you got a dual threat guy. So mm-hmm. the dual threat guy, Zach Calaris, my roommate, my dog, my brother, went off, like took the Big East on a freaking spin. We ended wow. up going undefeated that year. 
and uh, he was a big part of it. Is he? Where's he now? He's up in Canada playing for uh, Saskatchewan. He's had a lot of uh, NFL interests, and he could have yeah. played or at least made a few squads. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he was like, "My life up here is nice. Just married a Toronto girl, so he's living nice. it, man. Nice. He's living it. Yeah, or just North Toronto. I don't even know what the Canadians. Yeah. Canadian. So Canadian uh, gals. Yeah, I got a, I got a little, got a little. Uh, I'd say, I'd say a little four or five pack from Canada. I love. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite a six. When you get into the different regions, it's, you know, it's it, it, honestly, Canadian girls, I don't want to generalize, but it's, it's, it's definitely like when you say melting pot, Canada, oh, Toronto, for sure. especially. For sure, yeah. I was blown away by the girls up Diversity, there. Diversity, man. But the, they're so fucking like, there's like a little, I mean, I think it's mainly because I spent a lot of time in LA and around entertainment. But what a nice little wholesome inviting vibe up there from the gals. <laughs> Just make me feel nice and cozy. I'm we don't barely you, know each other. Wake I'm up, get up, get some breakfast. I mean, we had some amazing times up there. Anyway, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going down a rabbit hole. Um, okay, so you're you're now your boy's starting to ball out, yeah. and you're kind of what on the outside looking in. Yeah, so I'm I'm just sitting I'm sitting around enjoying because we're winning. So I mean, shit's still fun. Yeah. Every, after every game, we're partying and mm -hmm. having fun. And mm -hmm. I mean, heck, we were rolling. So from that point until the end of the year, uh, I hadn't played much. So I was partying and just trying mm -hmm. to like. I was a, I wouldn't say I was upset, but I mean there were times where I was like, let me get my mind off of like not playing. Like I still got a lot of football here at the university to play. Yeah. And um sure enough, the end of the season comes, they asked me to take a drug test. And mm -hmm. it's not just this the university, it's the NCAA. Mm -hmm. And NCAA, I'm just sitting there like, Oh man, here we go. How the heck do I pass this thing? So mm -hmm. I start taking all the the vitamins that I can, oh, all, yeah. the, all the every drinking gallons of water, like it's my life, and uh, ended up failing it because none of that works. And um, mm -hmm. sure enough, I I get suspended for 365 days. Not From only do I, yeah, and and it doesn't, you can't get redshirted. It doesn't even if I could get redshirted again, it doesn't work. If I go down to D two, it still doesn't work. NCAA rules like so. These these types days. of things like really fuck a lot of people up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you, it, it, it really is one of those things where, because I, I had a few homies that this happened to, mm -hmm. and they never came, they never bounced back because it's just one of those things where, like, you feel like you're losing so much time in the prime. That's you know, when you're huge, in college, man. like, it's just this four year window where, like, you know, you're on your, your bigger goal is to go on to the next level, and you're oh, losing yeah. to lose a whole, whole year. That's a gaping Especially hole. Especially the opportunity to play that next year. Yeah, because is, you just sat out, you just didn't play much. So, yeah. What what was going on mentally when this happened? Like, oh, I was I was in the gutter. Yeah, I was in the gutter because I because the it was literally at a point where we were transitioning coaches. So Brian Kelly was going to Notre Dame. Mm. We had just got a new coach. Oh, yeah, Brian Jones. Kelly there. Originally. Oh yeah, BK. Uh. BK. I could tell you that dude motherfucked me so many fucking times. Can imagine. I love. I he seems like a fucking I hard laughed. ass. Yeah. I loved it. When Did you guys get along? I loved it. When Did you get along afterwards or not really? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. If I saw him today, I'd give him a hug, man. Love that. Dude's awesome. Yeah. I love I love coaches that'll get in your fucking face. Yeah, I mean it's part of it. It's yeah. part of it, especially when deep down you know you deserve it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like hey, even I'm if just, you're like, ah, I took a real risk there. Yeah, <laughs> rolled the dice. It didn't it didn't pay off, coach? Especially a QB. It's just like ah <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. But um, so it was during the transition, and Butch Jones was coming in. He ended up getting a job at Tennessee after after a little bit of success at Cincinnati, and um, he came in and just laid it on the line. I wasn't the only one to fail the test. It was like probably. Six, six, five or six guys that failed the test, and I was the only one to eventually get back on the team. But he kicked us all off at the time. He's just like, "Liz, I can't wow. do, this. I can't do this. You know, I got to set a standard. This isn't, this isn't a standard that, yep. you know, what I mean, is to play around with. Like some guys can stay, some guys can go. You got to go." Right. And it was my brother's senior year, so I'm, I'm Fuck. going into my sophomore year knowing that I'm going to miss 365 days, and now I got kicked off the team. Which then tells me, all right, if I'm on scholarship, like this is my last, like this is the tail end semester, quarter, whatever we were on at that point. This is the tail end that I have my scholarship to because he's about to yank it. Mm. So I'm sitting here like, dang, I don't even got school. What's that paid call for. like to your mom and dad? Tears. Like, I mean, I'm what, I, at that point, I'm 19. 20, yeah. Not even 20 yet. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, you're just letting them I down. I just fucked everything up. And it was right after my brother had gained a scholarship. So he went to university to play linebacker at like 225 pounds. And they told him, like, all right, 
if you change positions, you go to center or you play offensive line, gain 60 pounds, play offensive line. So just line. be as fat as you can. We'll give you a scholarship. If you drink <laughs> a 30 rack every two days. was that What was his regimen like pizza, to gain that much weight? Beer and pizza and shit? Everything? Two foot long subways at lunch and then, a, then like a pizza at dinner. I mean, it was just nonstop, just like stuffing his face. Is he working out hard? I mean, every day, time? every day he's working out. So I mean, he, I, I'm pretty sure there were days where he was just like throwing up half of the and shit he, he went was on taking in to be that position in the NFL, right? Two time All Pro. Yeah, he's a first baller. team All Pro. And he's yeah. a lineman, offensive. So center, it's yeah. funny how oh, it's they, their crazy. transition actually ushered him in the right direction. There was direction. one other guy that kind of gave him the confidence to be able to do it. And that was. Uh, that was Staley in uh, San Fran. Okay. L big left tackle, used to be a tight end, was real skinny, wasn't really that, couldn't move around like that. But they told him, like, you got good feet. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of slower than we would like what a tight end. Be, but, yeah. like, if you gain some weight, you'll be first-round tackle. And sure enough, he went there, first-round tackle. So he went tackle. from a non-scholarship collegiate player to an NFL pro bowler. Yes. And, yeah, he's legendary. And everyone fucking loves that guy. I got to meet him. No, oh, no, you listen. I'm telling you, I've yet to run across anybody that has anything bad to say. Is he still ripping doors him. off? How, house um, no? no, he's since bought his house, so he's a little bit smarter about ripping doors off. I wouldn't run him over, but I like my doors. <laughs> 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 that door, that door got the best of me one night. Exactly. I had a, recovering off a broken hand. <laughs> he could take a swing at that one. I fucked that door. That door fucks. Yeah, fucking just add it to the list. Fuck, fuck this guy. Door. I'm motherfucking everything tonight. Um, fuck little doms too. <laughs> How's we're our time? See. And your four items on the menu. We're six. We're six twenty right now. How are we doing? They got a good wine list though. We're twenty minutes from there. We'll leave here in twenty minutes. You guys keep going. Okay. You just throw the white flag in when you're ready. <laughs> um. So. Nice. So you're yeah, suspended. So, so I'm suspended. Oh, so you're I gotta call my. I gotta call my dad, my mom. Tell them that I don't have a scholarship. I got to find out what I'm going to do for not only school, for future. So my dad uh, calls around, and um, I ended up getting a job just so I could have some money in my pocket. And it was at the school, actually. I was I was calling up, uh, I was calling up people for surveys uh, during it. the day um, about Obamacare because Obama had just got elected in, in 08. So... I was or oh seven, I think. And, Hi, um, no, not even that. I was Obamacare. not throwing my name out there. No, so <laughs> I would throw. I would. I forget the company that I was working with, but I was just asking people that were that were at their home during the day, just random calls, like, "Hey, do you want to take this survey? I'm going to ask you about the presidency and Obamacare and how you think everything's going." And sure enough, I mean, Southern Cincinnati, Kentucky, Eastern Indiana, you're getting some, you're getting some hicks. You're getting some yeah. dudes that are like, "Fuck." Oh, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Fucking Obamacare. Yeah. Oh, he's the worst president we've ever had. Yeah. Just like, I'm talking about hardcore racists, like coming yeah, at yeah, your yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to, like, I have to hear what they're saying. So I ask them a question. And it was like a survey of, like, answers. <laughs> I love to be a final, Click this, final office. Dude, it, it was fun for about a week. And then you just got, like, yeah, you oh got, like, oh, God, these dudes are aggressive. I'm over this. Yeah. Then you're just clicking in. And then there's a comment box. of sure enough, I got to write the comments of what they're saying. I'm just like, oh, okay. So you said, fuck this dude. And then what else? <laughs> <laughs> and and I, oh, I, I'm sorry, sir, but the comments box is full. Can I go on to the next question? Yeah, yeah. And it was just like that every single day for, like, Three months. I'm surprised people are even answering and giving it their time of day. Like, I, well, you got to think who's at who's at the house. Yeah, they got shit outs. Old old people, people yep. that own farms. They got shit outs. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, yeah, that's all we got They'd left to is be able up. to just chop it up and love to tell, tell everybody what they've been thinking about. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it was uh, that was quite an experience, but I mean that at least had me like eating out here. So, so. during that time, how are you? Do you remember how you like? Obviously, you had the the. You, you were sad and you had the the moment of telling you the realization after it settles though what's your psyche here you're like i'm gonna get through this i uh, know it was it was i am i'm fucked in life right yeah. now like i really fucked so it was a low up. it was a f low it was on. low it was low low i grew my hair out to my shoulders i mm -hmm. like sh shaved my face every day and just like looked at myself in the mirror like you're disgusting <laughs> <laughs> every day every day i just want to be like you suck <laughs> fuck you yeah exactly every day and um, what that eventually turned into was me catching a break. Um, my brother, what I was, what I was doing outside of work was I was just, I was like, all right, what's 
what's always been plan B baseball. I've always been like baseball was a sport where I was, I was smooth at it. I had a good swing. I had a cannon, like I could play anywhere on the field. Mm -hmm. I was got like a utility guy and I understood where I understood the game. Yeah. So it was, it was always plan B. So I ended up asking, asking around and got on a, a semi pro team down in, uh, down in Cincinnati and ended up actually playing this guy. Later, found out. No way. Um, he played for Hamilton. I He's ended up pointing to his agent over there. So that's <laughs> a fucking awesome. That's an awesome story. It's, it's a cool way to kind of connect the, yeah, the yeah. dots. But it was. Um, I ended up playing in this wooden bat semi pro league. Are you getting paid for that? No, 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 no. Not getting paid. I'm just trying to, you yeah. know, get some spark some interest. I knew the baseball coach of Cincinnati wanted me there, so I ended right. up. Uh, I ended up playing baseball, doing pretty solid in the league and everything to where I could have joined the baseball team if I found a way to pay at for Cincinnati. school. Cincinnati. Yeah. So that was something I at least had, all right, I can hang my hat on. I can at least, that's mm -hmm. that's a vision. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then my brother went to the coaches and everybody and uh, and basically like put his life on the line for me to be able to get back on the team. It's like, hey, listen, he won't have one hiccup. The entire time he won't have one hiccup. And, now, was uh, he telling you this was going on? Yes, he, he, he literally threw me up against the fucking door. I was like, listen, I'm going to fucking put my, my entire career on the line for you. You better not fuck this up. That's you awesome. already fucked it up once. And um, sure enough, shit, went out there. They, uh, I went back to the coach. The coach told me, he was like, I'm not fucking around with you. You, mm -hmm. have, you, have, to, you have to be on honor roll. You have to, there are dean's list. You have to do this, this, this. Stay out of trouble. Not late to a fucking meeting. The entire time, every single class you better be at. Mm -hmm. And um, I followed that line up until my, I followed that guideline up until my senior year and got my scholarship back my senior year. But the big condition was, is if you're going to come back on the team, I don't need a quarterback. I need a tight end. And I was just like, ah. That, now, you, like, that you, was had, the, that was the dagger in the chest. No, the, I, other than quarterback? In or? my mind, I was a QB. Nobody can tell me different. Nobody can still. I'm not a real, I'm not, I'm not really a tight end. I'm just a quarterback playing tight end right now. Eventually, yeah, it's it going to come out. It doesn't look like it. Eventually, it's going to come <laughs> it out. It doesn't no. look like it. No. Are, have they let you get a pass off in the league? Yeah, I threw a pick against New York. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, I hucked it, though. You did? I hucked it, yeah. kind of sailed your, on me. That New York win, though. You got your rocks off. You that New York win yards. Yeah, exactly. Fuck it. Yeah, that was the story in itself. So they changed both of your, you and your brother, they yep. changed both your positions. Both our positions, yep. And they both ended up. Pro Bowl for sure, careers. and we both have confidence that if we would have stayed at our position, we still would have been good. But yeah, that's just the confidence we have in ourselves to be able to pick whatever we wanted to do and just run with it, man. Of course, of course. So fast forward, right? You have you guys have a great year. What your senior year? Or you I I ended up my senior year. I ended up having a great year. Mm -hmm. I've I locked in. I was like the the nerd of the the entire group. I didn't go out, didn't party. I was like, this is my last fucking. Really? Gym. Nobody knows who the fuck I am. I partied for four years. I need to sit down, make it to the league, and then have fun when I get there. Like there's another type of fun once I yeah. get over this mountain. And um, I lived my life like a freaking. I love that dude. I'm talking about didn't didn't even like sneeze mm. on a, on a on any like just just clean as could be mm. um and led led my team to i think it was like a 10 win season um played played my ass off and sure enough uh andy and john dorsey and all the guys in kansas city gave me a chance to play uh in the league now when the draft comes around are you a lock or have you spoke to them like yeah we're, they're gonna so you no had clue. a certain uncertainty in the no air. Clue. I knew I knew personally that there wasn't a better tight end in the class. Um, Zach Hertz has gave me a run for my money for sure. Yeah. He's he's a hell of a fucking player. Yeah, he is. Um, but at the time, I was thinking like, man, there's not a single tight end better than me. Mm -hmm. Like, it shows I'm all around. I can block. I can you, do this. But you missed the combine. I missed the combine, which hurt me a lot. Yeah. Um, and then with the injury that I had, I lost a lot of weight. So I was like rocked up 270, 265, 270, and I was running like a gazelle. And sure enough, when I got to uh, Kansas City, I was like 6'5", 245. So mm -hmm. I, lost, I lost a bunch of weight mm -hmm. and a bunch of strength because of the surgery. I had abdominal surgery. Um, what, a hernia? Yeah, I had sports hernia. I tore that about third game of the season, just played through it. Um Wow. That's and more bald. more com more common than you think, but yeah, ended up balling through that. But uh, 
Yeah, so just getting that whole opportunity. Mm-hmm. I'd say taking advantage of your opportunity and having having to live for something, you know, and not only just having to live for something, but having that drive for that every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're a guy. You're a guy that has fun. You, you're you're and and you it's, gotta have fun, man. And it's you dude. It's to. what I say. It's it's like I preach it. Like, like fuck you if you don't like to have fun. Because it's just like I, I know so many athletes, and I and I see. There's like not all right. So everyone has their own cup of tea. You know, there's some people that don't. It's not necessarily about partying. It's right. just an idea that like it's your whole entire existence doesn't revolve around you catching a fucking football. Know, you exactly. know, and it's like the, one of the first really things you said it. when we had this podcast. We started. You were like, you know, I went to the fashion week, and I, I like to treat my off seasons in a manner where I'm figuring out things that i'm interested in you know for the long haul it's like one of the first things out of your mouth and that's Hell yeah really it's it's pretty apparent just given my experience being around athletes it's pretty easy to tell very quickly like which guys are which you mm-hmm. know i have some get somebody's like you who you know obviously take your sport and your craft as seriously as you can you're playing at the highest level and excelling but there's more layers to you as a person as a human yeah. you know that it's just more like uh, I just try to like. There's just uh, there's so many messages and emails and fan mail. Like, oh man, I'm not gonna be able. I thought I was gonna be able to get drafted this year. I didn't. Or my, you know, I, I thought I was gonna play college. And it's not their 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 careers, their baseball or mm-hmm. their whatever their play gets cut short in that harsh reality that like, mm-hmm. okay, I no longer identify, you know, with with yeah, being an athlete this... anymore. What do I do next? You know, yeah. and it's and that's a crazy that's a crazy world. Though I've I've tried to support that or recently just like supported a book towards that of like cheers or f- yeah cheers to fears like being able to be a part of this 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 kind of like a uh, life just this lifestyle of always being like cheered and pushed towards the goal of being a professional mm-hmm. to one day that's over and now what the fuck do i no do way. the fear of what do i get into how do, how do i find the cheers from playing sports to people cheering for me and what I'm doing now because mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was out there dunking on cats, seeing everybody go crazy. Like, I fuck it. I, I get an adrenaline rush. How do I find that adrenaline rush? Mm-hmm. And um, Cheers to Fears is called the book. You get it on Amazon. But it's 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 a whole different world. Guys don't know how to transition. I've seen so many cats oh get caught up in doing the wrong shit, mentally being just depressed all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. And not being able to find what their new life is, mm-hmm. and I, I just, I'm out here trying to support everybody. But like, bro, you are so much more than just an athlete, man. Mm-hmm. Like, people look at me and see football. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I don't even associate football with my life. Like, I'm just like, all right, what do I want to get into next? I've already done this football thing, right? You know what I mean? Like, right. what am I going? Like, that's going to take care of itself because of the drive that I have to be the best that I can be at football. Right? Like, that's going to take care of itself. It's got me this far. It'll take care of the right. rest of it. Like, how am I going to find that drive, that want in mm-hmm. other areas of the world? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And where do you think that's going to be at? Do you have those answers yet? <sighs> I couldn't even tell you, man. I've, I've, I have a. You don't have to have. I, I have a few Plan Bs. Yeah. I haven't found the one that I'm like. That's what I want to do. Yeah, but I, I found mean, a few. It's just like, yeah, let's. Uh, I yeah. mean, it's there. I mean, dude, I'm it's a perfect there. example. I never even. I didn't even know I could make music. You know, like I got it. My, <laughs> I had an crazy. abrupt ending to my shit. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I say abrupt, the injury happens abruptly, and then I had like a 16 to 24 month, two year period where I'm rehabbing, still with this goal, like Hell I'm gonna yeah. be, I'm gonna come back better, stronger, you know, everything. Without a doubt. But just fell in, like the, I, I truly believe, at least the mindset is the first. Everything starts in the mind, you know. We know this, but the mindset to understand, like, look, you're just at, you're actively already in flow because you're already understanding, like, look, there's there's more layers to life. There's more. You're actively pursuing it, even though you don't have the answer. By the time it does happen, you're already be in that mind. Like you've been in that mindset for so long, right. it flows to you. It's like I didn't dope. have this. You know, I had, it was complete fucking, you know, it was completely left field. Like, people who knew me growing up, they're like, dude, the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the fuck happened? Was, what, you know, like, it really is it that. Just, you just started doing it, like, amongst the team, right? Well, just, yeah, because, like, basically, I was the dude who could, like, freestyle for days, like, if we were at a party and I'm drunk. Like, you know, that was right. it, though. Like, the first fucking, like, never played an instrument. Like, dog, I'm I'm the opposite of musically inclined, musically trained in any way. Yeah, I hear you. Um, and it just one of those things like it was 
it's crazy to look back on with a with a with a more grown perspective yeah. because I, I realized with a broad view. You see how everybody else got to where you're at. Right. It's like you just took And the I realized fucking... I like I, I, I jumped. You know, I jumped into the unknown and I and I faced the fear. I, I didn't let fear topple my you know, these crazy aspirations that mm -hmm. I had because they were as crazy as could be for somebody like me. It just wasn't ever in the cards you would have thought, you right. know? And it's yeah. it's really like looking back on it now with a wider perspective, I'm like, oh man, like I there's a reason this paid off because I jumped into it with a bit, you know, with with zero the idea of like caring about what people thought of me like that people were laughing at me at home when i when i'd walk out of the room fuck or man. you know like it just fuck like, those people Mike, man yeah fuck you guys too fuck you guys um to the list but seriously you know like at it, the top it's one of those things where you know it's it's something i look for when i meet athletes like what are these you know how are they what makes these guys tick mm -hmm. and there's there's a huge i'd say like it's either one or the other it's the guys who fucking like, yo, this is what I do in the off season. I'm going to rest my body. it will start get going again, you know, right. or there's guys who like, one of my, my best friend, Marcus Stroman, he really is like very similar to you, the baseball Stroman's version. Marcus Stroman, man. Yeah, yeah. He's the fucking man, but he, he's into fashion. He's oh, into yeah. wine. He wants to have a, you know, uh, a winery. He wants to, all these things. And it's just like, yes, like that's, that's what I, and that's what I try to emphasize to any kids in general, not even in sports. Like if you're at school, you're stu you obviously have to be dedicated to your strengths and your passions. Always, you know, always, but yeah. the understanding of like can't just be yeah. free will and jumping into shit. But I mean, yeah, yeah, like exactly. you got to have a fucking lane and of actually course. feel comfortable. This goes, what the, you're it doing. goes without saying, you should have plans and goals for sure. But don't be attached to those plans and those goals. Hell like no. you never thought you're going to be a tight. Like even just simply down to your position. Like you weren't attached. You went with where you had to go. You did what you had to do. You went with the flow wherever it took you, and it Hell landed yeah. you where you wanted to be in, in the first place. I'm with you, man. You know the crazy. The craziest thing is that you find root. I feel. I feel like the biggest thing is like routines. I was talking to a homie that just jumped into. A, um, what is it? Medical medical sales. So mm -hmm. he's like he's trying to sell these medical units to doctors, to hospitals, mm -hmm. and um, he was like he hit a fucking wall. He's a he's a former athlete, and he's like, man, I can't just I can't figure the shit out. I'm like, bro, you got to find a fucking routine. Mm -hmm. Like think about it like this: you get you from a football player's perspective, you you hear a play from either the quarterback or the or a guy walking in or the coach telling you what play it is, and you have a routine of how you walk up to the line, identify what's in front of you, mm -hmm. and so that when you when the ball is snapped, you instinctually have an understanding of like you can just play instinctually because in instincts, that's what you that's what you practice for, the fundamentals, everything that you do on the practice field is for the instincts in, in when it's game time. In fact. So finding that routine and in life for your profession mm -hmm. whether it's oh if i'm a medical sales guy all right when i walk into the doctor's office i'm asking questions where do i need to be what what room looking at a board all right this is where my surgery is in line this is what just mm -hmm. whatever it is in life mm -hmm. you know what i mean finding that routine to be able to master your craft and make it as easy as possible to make those instinctual decisions mm -hmm. and eliminate the the details the minor distractions mm -hmm. i mean that's 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 the biggest thing in terms of success that i that i've ever found so you're a routine guy for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my listen my routine everyone's got to find their own routine mm -hmm. obviously everyone has to find your own yeah. routine whatever floats your boat finds a lost remote baby and, <laughs> and what that and what that's going to do is it's going to make you perfect yourself yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not telling when totally. I'm talking to rookies or I'm talking to guys. I'm like, bro, find it, find yeah. it. Just start doing shit until it feels natural and that's who you are. We talk, you yeah. mean, even if it's different, even if it's some off the wall shit. Yeah. I am during training camp. I'm have my headphones in, got a football, walking around on the field, walking through routes, doing little stuff, visualizing, fantasizing, dreaming, whatever you want to call it. I'm dreaming big. I'm taking every single every single catch. Yeah, this is what I, I want to fucking know about. You know so you're, I mean? you're a you're out in the field visualizing. S Super. I'm in my in my house visualizing. I'm walking around my crib. I'm hitting every corner like I'm running a route. I'm. It, I just when it's time to like lock in and be about football, I turn into a kid again. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a kid, my dad was trying to grow like trees or grow certain plants in the garden and shit. So he had these little makeshift plyo board squares with a big uh, what do you call it? like plastic stick that right. went straight up in the ground so shit could grow straight up mm -hmm. and uh, he got done with those I was like dad you doing anything with those he's like oh, I'll put them in the back of the garage and I was like alright let me get those so I put them I lined them up like they were uh, 
Like they were the offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Like so, I line them up like left tackle, left guard, center, but and down and I threw a tight end out there, and I just act like I was a QB going through my reads. And sure enough, I got really good at running the ball, just visualizing. All right, so mm -hmm. that in the game, everything I've already visualized this. There's a guy coming at me from this angle. Like I've already visualized, all right, I have a move. I have a plan of attack. All right, I'm going to step with this way, stiff arm him, and try and get up field as fast as possible. It. There's just so much in terms of dreaming. Like when you say dreaming, all right, yeah, dreaming big. I want to be right. MVP at the National Football League. Nice. How do you get there? You got to dream the little dreams first. You got to visualize the little things first because there's steps to be able to get to that. Right. And she, I've, I mean, that's the biggest routine that I do is I visualize a half in, I got, to, I got to the gold. And nice, we found it. Yeah, no, see, I, I really, this is, I'm, I'm huge and I've become like a meditation and, oh, yeah. and learned a ton about this. My dad instilled visualization like back when I was young, very young, lost, kind of lost it after baseball like i would i would visualize like when we were the star spangled banner was playing like i'd visualize i was oh, a closer yeah. so i'd visualize like coming in and finishing it and i would i would do that in my That's freshman dope. year i fucking balled the fuck out then i got injured as that happened visualization didn't make sense to me anymore because i didn't even know what i was wanting to visualize mm -hmm. you know like i i didn't even know what the fuck i was going to do next really necessarily um and just recently, I'd say probably this past 12 months, gotten into the meditation space, you know, the self-empowering, how, how can I improve? There's just things about my psyche as I've settled into this new lifestyle and this is what we are, this is what's going on. How can I, how can I improve the way I'm feeling every day I wake up, you know, getting yeah. in a routine of sort. Um, but the visualization has been massive. Like it's the first thing I do when I meditate, it's I real, visualize how, what I want to be, what I want to see next. And bro, it starts to happen. Microscopic decisions, man. Mm -hmm. Instinctual decisions. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, going left or right. That's the most power you got in this world. You're, I mean, Preach. if you think about it, yeah, if you think about it, I mean, how much, how much power do I really have in this world? There's always going to be somebody bigger. There's always going to be someone faster. And there's only so there's many things you can control you personally. Know I mean? you exactly. Know? It's about exactly. controlling those to the best of your ability. Exactly. So make so being able to understand, and, and it's a life. You're going to learn on the go as you go. Mm -hmm. But if you can think about something, mm -hmm. like. And 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 have a plan for that for that thought for that decision when it hits, mm -hmm. like man, you're setting yourself up for at least a chance. Facts. Whether it's on the field, off the field, whatever you're getting yourself into. Are you guys listening at home? This is what I'm talking about. This is seriously a lot of a lot of athletes follow me. I would say dream big, kids. Fifty percent of it, but even fuck if you're not an athlete, it's about visualizing the thing. When you can understand what you want, but there's a whole other there's a whole other list of things that that entails to, to to obtain it right it's not just sitting there and thinking it's it's like you said microscopically taking it step by step brick by brick and mm -hmm. allowing yourself to get to the place you want to see allowing yourself to get to the place you're seeing in exactly your head, you that's know? what it really is yeah it'd be it, so that's a great way to end it'd be it'd be fucked if we didn't show him the chug blood kilmer can you grab one so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm a business guy i went to duke study business so okay i, I uh Shout out to the business of Duke, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all you motherfuckers. Did you graduate? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And so I went to Georgetown after. I see so the I jersey. So I went to Georgetown the grad, jersey. and that's really where Mike Studd started to happen. Is that right? Because I just story. started, like, me and Stromy would, like, make songs in the closet and, like, just, I'm talking That's where like, I thought it started. The lowest right. level shit. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. The yeah. T-Pain fucking uh, auto-tune? <laughs> literally literally th that was one of the first things we did like we i'd just like make it like a minute diss and send it to him in class you know That's funny as but funny. um but uh anyways we, i i found i want i always wanted to get like i've 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 been in the investment space a bit um, with cannabis in certain certain worlds. The shit that's happening organically relationship wise nice. this is the first thing I'm doing kind of on my own so this company reached out to us you're the chug guy so I have to fucking go so essentially this company it fell in my lap, you know, like I've been wanting to get into the space where I can invest in, I know it looks like a sex toy, I'm going to explain it. So, I'm listening, I'm listening. So this, this company sent it, you know, I fucked with it, they wanted to pay me like 5k or 10k for to post just me doing a chug out of it or whatever. And I see it, cool. Um, and then one of my boys like walks in and I'm like on the phone and I see him do one. Nice. And I'm like... Wait, do that again? It was the functionality of it like blew me away. So essentially, I don't, I'm talking to a guy who knows this, but there's two ways to chug. I, I don't understand how two this ways is going to work. I'm going to show you. Yeah. There's two ways to chug a beer, right? The Studweiser. 
right Yeah, now. the Studweiser. <laughs> this it's actually called the Chug Bud, right? So okay, you crack the bud. beer. But you know, the two ways of chugging a beer, right? There's shotgunning. Yes. You obviously know. You stab a beer in the side in the side with a key. <laughs> which is kind of a train wreck. You gotta go outside. Like it we'd spill it's yeah. you're you're drinking out of a jagged keyhole, right? I'm with you. Or the beer bong, which is like this big, fuck, you know, and yeah. you can pour the beer on top, yeah. but it's not super some, foamy. Yeah, and post like all right, it really came from like post. We, he'd be like, "Yo, come come through, we'll go to his crib," and be like, he'd always send like a follow up text, "Bring the beer bongs." He loves <laughs> beer bongs. So like Versace would be carrying beer bongs, and they're like over his shoulder, big. They're like, you can't walk around a party yeah, with them. You can't you know hide I mean? those things. So this started to like really all make sense for me. This is really just it's the perfect <clears throat> middle ground. You crack the beer, that's it. It's on. It goes. It goes easy. Ready? Oh, I love that sound. Oh, air vent. Golly, science, man. Look where science has got us. But look right how now. clean. That is legendary. That Real is clean. clean. That is clean. Are you going to do one for us? Am I? <laughs> I'm going to test this baby out. <laughs> so so mid, mid you're gulpage, on. So you're, you're on? I'm so, stabbing. So the, the cool part is it's not like a panic. You can lift it up. <laughs> you can lift it up. It's gonna start flowing down. You just stab, just stab it like, a, a, like a shotgun. A new. Yeah, keep those out of the way. So you this lift it up. Just, it stays on though. It stays on. Oh, Let's that's see. legendary. It goes on like a plunger. Yeah, I just want to yeah, make sure on. I had that on. thing on. I'm in. I'm in. You're in like Flynn. It's cold, so don't be alarmed. His his agents over there are like I'm fuck. About to say, this thing is fucking freezing. We ready for this? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stab it and take it out. Perfect. Let it fly. Oh, it made it look easy. Wow. Oh, it's a nice, tasty cold beverage. <laughs> it's just a cold American beer. I wanted, I'm a big, I'm a big squeeze guy when I chug. You could have squeezed it. I did. I did, and I felt like next time you squeeze maybe. it, maybe <laughs> that feels extra <laughs> weird. I'm gonna squeeze this thing while it's. In my but yeah, mouth. but think about it, right? This is what I'm gonna do is like. This fuck, is this is fucking, smooth. Think about it, if you're if you're a frat, you get this for ten bucks. You can walk around a frat bar. It's just like in your pocket. It's not like a big annoying fucking beer bong. So yeah, we're gonna make a bunch of money on these. I need these at Arrowhead. Well played. I need these at Arrowhead. Maybe some Travis Kelsey senders. We'll Kelsweisers. We'll, <laughs> Kelsweisers. We'll figure out. We'll figure out the brand and we'll work this thing out. But yeah, dude, seriously, cool. thank you so much for you're doing nice, this. Dude, without uh, a doubt, everyone at home, where can we find you? You're just on Instagram, Twitter, all the, all the same. I'm everywhere. everywhere. Travis Kelsey. T Kels on T. Kels. Twitter, Killer Travel on Insta. All the Holla Steves follow this guy. This this he's one of us. We've that's the first thing I said when we hung out. I was like, that guy's a fucking legend. Like we hang out with a lot of guys. This guy's got the sauce. Follow him. I'm now a. I want to say I have I have my reasons. Personal. We'll leave them off. But I'm a. I'm ready to convert to being a Chiefs fan. I was a come Patriots through, guy. I'm no man. longer. I don't just, think I can be anymore. So I'm ready to. I'm ready come to come through. Cross man. over to the dark side. Listen. Arrowhead is wait. There's a red carpet waiting for you. As soon as you get off the jet, you just go roll straight in. <laughs> Arrowhead's waiting on you. I, need, I know you got a box in the contract. You know too. it. We're pulling up. You know it. St. Louis got love for the kid. Or St. Louis oh, yeah. and we we do a lot of St. Louis in, in Missouri. In Missouri, so I'll, I I might have a penthouse across the street or something. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, bro. Again, I appreciate you. Always, much All right. love. All right, Much we're love. out. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Hey.